Oh yeah! In an attempt to make the best purchases which will last me a long, long time, I've had some wins and I've had some losses. Welcome, I'm Carl Morawski. This is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. Look, I gotta be straight with you. This is actually, I saw this as a Reddit post and I thought, what a brilliant idea. So I made my own version of it. And we're gonna jump right into it. Number one, the original Leatherman. This is actually my original one. You can tell the thing looks insane. I mean, it's so beat up. I've, I've, I've used this thing everywhere. And look, oh, you see that? That's something you don't get with the new ones. The fact that it just kind of comes out of there all loosey goosey like that. It's usually the sign of a good tool. Oftentimes our, our lineman pliers, same things. If, if they drop open nicely, then you know that you can um, you can use them one handed. And these things are great. Everything from the tip alignment, you know, if I was to twist or something like that, the tips have stayed aligned. Like I said, I've used this thing like you would not believe. Even the wire cutters are still in great shape. Leatherman tools are, in my opinion, I think Victorinox is the only one that's up there. Uh, but really, I, I just, I can't say enough about these. I actually have bought two other ones, the Curve, and uh, the Curve Wave, I can't remember what it's called, and then the basically the newer version of the Super Tool. But this is my original, and it still works perfectly fine. Uh, part of me just kind of wants to retire it, retire it so I can give it to my son or something like that, and that's why I got the new one. But I could keep using this thing if I really wanted to for probably the rest of my life. Now, unfortunately, the fail was this here. This was a Gerber. It was called the Gerber Crucial, but it did not hold up. The the tip, especially of the, the pliers here, you can't put any pressure on them. Now, this was a lot less expensive than the, the, the Leatherman, but you know, still, if it's less expensive, but you still don't use it, then it just, you know, it's a waste of money. The other thing is that this had an assisted opening knife, which, I mean, did you see that? That's not really assisted, is it? I mean, it's, I'm flicking it on my own, but I mean, I have, you know, regular, just, just like flipper design ones that come out a lot faster than that. The other thing is that this, everything on it is just kind of wobbly. Like this thing, and you can see there's a lot of wobble in that. I'm trying to hold it as still as I possibly can. Look at that. It's crazy. The build quality on this was just uh, subpar from everything. Everything on it was just feels very loose and, and this is way, way newer than my Leatherman. For my money, I'd rather spend a little bit more and get another one of these than two or three of these. Next up is the two under power shift underwear. I originally heard of these from a friend of mine named John. He had a, a channel called The Cavalier a long time ago. It's since defunct, I guess, but he had done a whole roundup of underwear and these were at the top of his list. I believe it was two under and sheath. Now I haven't tried sheath. I've heard good things about them, but the two under power shift model, especially, has, I, I still have the first ones that I bought several years ago and in the mix of all the other ones that I have, I can't tell you which ones those are. They, they haven't worn. It's unreal. Whatever they're doing with these things is fantastic. Now for the fail, I bought some of those ex officio boxer briefs. And now the material is some sort of a synthetic and it, it's almost a, like a waffle knit kind of thing. For me, it's just like, it grabs your leg hair and it just creates all kinds of issues, bumps and rashes and, I can't stand them. They also seem to wear pretty fast, especially as compared to the two under, which like I mentioned, I can't even tell which ones the first ones are. As a matter of fact, I, I kind of just, I, I threw them away. They're garbage. I, I bought several pairs and it was a waste of money. Number three, darn tough Vermont socks. I still have the first pair that I ever bought. Now I have worn through a pair of darn toughs. But the great thing about them is that you can send them back like 15 years later and they'll send you a brand new pair. That alone to me is worth the brand loyalty. And I have recommended Darn Tough since I experienced them. Now I have had Smart Wool, I've had uh, Fox River, Kirkland also makes a good sock um, and, and several other brands. As a matter of fact, I did a roundup of like the most expensive boot socks that I could find. And I kept on going back to the darn tough ones. Now they're not 100% wool. If you have a 100% wool sock, it actually has some factors to it that you may not like. They don't have a lot of elasticity. They tend to kind of bag out and then they'll go back to their shape when you wash them. To me, it's just not worth it. Darn tough Vermont socks have been all I've worn. Now my fail when it comes to socks is I bought a pair from American Trench. American Trench, I've actually had pretty good luck with, but I, I just, I wore these, I wore through them like in, in a year. It was crazy how fast I wore through them. When I would wear them and they were in good working condition, they were okay. They weren't anything to really to write home about. I bought one pair and that was it. And um, 
I don't know, man. I mean, like the soles, the, you know, right behind your toe, whatever that front pad is called there, pads like of a dog. It just wore through and they were, they were threadbare on the bottom. I ended up chucking them. And unfortunately, there is no lifetime warranty, so I had nobody to send them back to. And American Trench, like I said, has been a good, reputable brand for me, but the socks, eh, no, I'll go darn tough any day. Next up is Randolph Engineering. I still have the first pair of Randolph Engineering glasses I bought. I'm trying to think now. I actually, believe it or not, bought them on the Allen Edmonds website. I think they were like an Allen Edmonds Randolph Engineering collaboration at some point, and they were like half off, and I bought them, and they, they are still just, I have them in my car right now. I wear them all the time. Now the paint has chipped a little bit around them and I kind of actually like that look because they look worn in, but I have several other pairs of Randolph's that I just, I, I can't get enough of. I love them. And every time I wear something else, I'm like, nah, <laughs> give me my Randolph's back. I bought a pair for my wife last year and she said, quote, they're almost too clear. I don't know what that means, take with it what you will, but I think what it was is that it was the first time she had worn a high quality lens that was also polarized. It can be a little bit jarring when you're not used to that, when you're used to kind of garbage sunglasses. Which brings me to my fail. Now my fail was Shades Club. Now I've talked about this before. I think it might just be shades.com. Maybe it's still Shades Club. It's a subscription service where basically you would pay like $30 a month. You're supposed to get a good high quality pair of sunglasses. And yeah, I didn't, I never did. And I mean, I have a bunch of these stupid things and they're all junk. I mean, gas station quality sunglasses are, are being kind to these things. They really, they're just, they're the ones that I will use if I think I might lose them. You're gonna go jet skiing for the day. You're gonna go tubing, zip lining, uh, something where you're doing an active sport and you might lose your sunglasses. That's what I'll use these for, or as a loner, or hell, take them with you, please do me a favor, get rid of them. That's what they're good for, but um, they are certainly not worth the money. It's better off just going to the gas station, like I mentioned, getting yourself a pair of made in China glasses and just just using them for what you need and then tossing them, I don't know, just junk. Finally is my NYX Builder Pros. You will never hear me not talk about these things because that's how drastic it was to me. I, I was wearing crappy work boots at the time and they were just, you know, they just weren't holding up to the railroad job that we were doing at the time. And I, I really had to grit my teeth and kind of close my eyes and click that buy it now button. It was the most money I had ever spent on any piece of clothing ever. But a few months later, you wouldn't hear me stop talking about it. And I still won't stop talking about them. They really changed my mind and made me realize that you can be comfortable at work in your work boots. I didn't think that was possible for a long time. And I still have them. They need a resole. They are my daily drivers. These are the boots that I would wear into a 12 hour shift overnight and not bat an eyelash. They're great. Now my fail, and you're not gonna hear this very much because a lot of times the people out there promoting this company won't say a bad thing about them, was my Thursday Boots Duke. I, I bought these and I thought they were pretty good because at first they were, and then the foam started to compress and after a little while, I might as well have been walking around barefoot. I didn't have anything between me and the floor or the cement or the asphalt or whatever. It just felt like I was walking on nothing. Now to Thursday's credit, it does seem like they have evolved. And that's one thing I gotta give the company credit for is that it seems like they will make a mistake or they'll just take a shot at something and then they'll move on and they'll try something new. I totally ripped apart their leather, not you know physically ripped apart, but I mean, I, I bought one of their leather jackets and I just did a review on that. I'll link it here, you can check it out. It was awful. Since then, they have course corrected and really done a great job at making, I think their fifth or sixth version of their leather jackets. And actually now they're pretty good. So what I had was the first version of the Duke Chelsea boot and it was okay until it wasn't and it sucked. It's definitely a buy it for life fail, but I'm not sure that same thing could be said with their current version. I don't have any and I don't know that that's uh, absolutely true, but I knew I do know that they've they've taken uh, the steps to keep improving their products. So look, credit where credit's due. I will certainly hold their feet to the fire when needed and I'll, I'll you know, hand it to them when when that's deserved as well. But. I, I gotta say, it's hard to blame somebody when they keep trying to improve what they're doing. Matter of fact, that makes me actually like the company more. So yeah, it was a buy it, buy it for life fail, but in the end, I think that you probably have a better product now based on the feedback that they received from people like me back in the day. 
So there you go. There are five wins and losses in my battle for Buy It For Life products. But do me a favor and let me know what a few of yours were, your, your wins, your losses, all that stuff in the comment section below because when we compile people's opinions and their experiences with different products, it helps everybody. So thank you for watching. Please take care of yourself. Do me a favor this week, call a friend, call a family member, have a chat, go get a coffee, do something that gets you out of this world of internet stuff and uh, do something that's good for your soul. Anyway guys, I'll catch you next time.